I'm the development consultant, and I'm the passion for software development, and uh, have done that for the past few eight years. I've been currently a development consultant for a large corporation, and did technical direction to remote teams, both in Canada and in India. My role has been a flock advocate since 2004, uh, giving regular presentation at local events, who has contributed to Kahoot! <coughs> He's also uh, um, with the postmaster, and we're sharing these thoughts in public. So, uh, <coughs> good to see you, Robin, and welcome. Hello. Nice to have you here. It's a, it's a nice crowd. Yes, so I've been doing this for fun uh, and for profit <laughs> for, for a long time. Open source since 2004, and uh, it's always been, been fun. My interest in this particular topic is I like to speak, I like to record my when I'm speaking to learn how to do it better while I'm at Toastmasters. And I found that I was spending too much time doing things that were repetitive, doing the same thing over and over and over. And I didn't feel like I was a videographer that wanted to do that for a life. Uh, I'm more of a developer, so I said there must be a way of doing it programmatically. There, I have two mottos in my, in my work. It's less work equal more fun. That means that I try to automate everything I do. At work, anything that I have to do more than three times, I try to automate. And second, I try to make myself obsolete when I'm at work. I try to do things in a way that once that I move on, things keep happening without having to have me there so I can go do a uh, better things or more fun things. Uh, with those two things in mind, I started playing with, the, um, with certain tools to try to automate repetitive tasks on video editing in a way that I would always get the same consistent results. And it saved me a lot of time because now, whenever I'm done with a Toastmasters meeting, I have my CD, I put it in the computer, I set up some parameters, click, go have dinner, when I'm back, it's edited exactly the, the way I want it. Uh, and I know that it's going to be good enough for me to upload it to YouTube, and I'm done. I don't have to spend more than five, 10 minutes in the computer uh, while I'm doing that. The only thing is that being scripted, everything I do is on the, on the command line. I don't do the point and click. Well, actually, I do it for a couple of tasks uh, that I will show. and. Uh, very important, if you think that you are here because you are going to learn how to do video editing for one-offs and do great things, no, that's, that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing uh, things that are repetitive. For one-offs, I still prefer when you're seeing what you're doing and, uh, and use a video editor that has a GUI. So to, to have an idea of what I'm talking about, I'm going to show a uh, sample video. of what I edited. So here is an introduction, here's a title, me, uh, what I do, then it blends into the, into the topic. I started speaking, but mean in the middle of the, of the talk, I have some overlays. And on the overlays, I'm talking and things are happening on the screen. Uh, all this is done with a particular script. Uh, one script doesn't work for everybody, so you will have to write your own, your own scripts. This is the one that worked for me. And at the end, I want to end it, my video consistently, uh, people clap, and then I have the, the closing of the, of the video. So something very simple, but if you're trying to do it over and over, it can be very time consuming. To, when I decided to automate that, I found many different tools to many different tools to do it. Uh, but I had to settle for two. Uh, one is FFmpeg, and the other one is Image Magic. And you will be surprised if you see Image Magic. Image Magic is for static images. You will see how using Image Magic 
in a creative way can be awesome. Uh, so the, the way that I do my scripts is I start with basic recipes. I'm not a video professional. I don't do this for a living. I have this much knowledge, but I know how to read, I know how to program, I know how to understand commands, and I know how to Google. And this is very important because a lot of the things that you want to do, you will, if you Google, you will find a way of doing it, then you just have to adapt it to your situation. Uh, my basic, all, all my scripts usually start by selecting the scene that I want to, um, that I want to edit. On the Toastmasters, they record the whole meeting. I can only show myself. I, don't, I cannot show the person that comes before or the person that comes after because, well, they are not me. And I may or may not have their permission to, to put them on, on YouTube. So FFmpeg has this particular command where you give the input file, uh, ss, the time for the scene start, the scene duration, codec, etc. Uh, all these commands or all these options are very well documented on the FFmpeg side. FFmpeg allows you to do the encoding, transcoding, uh, allows you to manipulate video. And initially, and it has many options and filters to do nice things. Initially, I thought that I was going to be able to do everything with FFmpeg. But then I found that it is when you want to do things just to a section of the video, it becomes a little bit cumbersome. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it can be done, but the FFmpeg command gets very, very long. It's pretty much a language on it, on its own. If I show you the script that I use for Oh, first, uh, I create a parameter file for my script. And here I use a trick that I learned long time ago. If you have this dot and another file is the same. Uh, if you are developers, you know what that include means. Uh, it's like an include. It includes that other uh, bash script into this bash script. So my parameter file even though it looks like parameters, it's no more than, than a bash file where I'm setting up some variables. And then here, I define the overlays. And I decided to make it as a function, as a bash function. If you see here, I just have speaker title date. Remember that I said that I use the uh, GUI tools for some things. Well, I use the GUI to figure out when the time starts and when the time ends. I, it's very difficult to do it if you are not looking <laughs> at the actual video. And just the name of the output file. And for the overlays, again, thi this looks like, pr like parameter. And again, this is what I did. You can do with your parameters whatever you want. Uh, I said overlay image, the image that I want to overlay. What is the um, gravity? If I want it up, down, the center, and then uh, from which second to which second. And that's it. And I, if I put the ampersand, are you familiar with bash? OK, so I put the ampersand because I want to overlay all of this at the same time. So it runs in parallel. It is. So. One thing that, that I, w <laughs> I know that I say that I'm a professional developer, this is for my personal um, pleasure. And if you see development practices that are less than perfect, just be lenient with me because I, am a, I, I didn't put a lot of thought in development practices in these particular little scripts. But it, what I do is I execute the cleanup. The, the cleanup function, uh, I have defined it up there that I delete everything, all my temporary files. I extract the, I call a function to extract the video. I create the introduction and the exit. And I, I will show you how I do it. And I do these two in parallel. And then I wait until I've created them. 
And here comes the interesting part. Everything that I decided to do is at the frame level. And that's where I got the most value of my script. Uh, then I fade the, uh, the introduction, I put the overlays, and I reassemble the, um, the video. This could be a longer presentation. Uh, with the time that we have, I will go very quickly about uh, through the commands that I'm, that I'm using. And you'll see uh, how you can extend from, from there. I will leave enough time at the end so we can explore a little bit more, a few more things, uh, and probably do it more as a conversation for the people that are already know the, the, these commands. You ask me, and someone else may, may answer. So if we start with the splitting of the video, I already explained. You saw that the input file, the scene starts in duration and output file, they were already on my configuration file. And all this is doing is, from this input file, cut from X time for so many seconds or so many minutes. Um, just copy it. Don't do any translation. Don't, don't do any re-encoding. Uh, the same for the video codec. Uh, same, uh, same quality. And in the computer that I normally use this, I have six cores. I say only use four of those threads so I can keep using my computer for something else. And don't ask me if you want to rewrite files. If I'm re re rerunning this script, I want to uh, overwrite files. So don't ask me. Don't, uh, don't stop. With that, what I end up with is, do I have it here? Yeah. I end up uh, from, normally I extract from the, from the DVD. The path that I use from the input file is the VOV file. So it's going to extract another VOV file from the DVD. Again, you can do it from any format. And something very important is that understanding what the formats are, what is your input format, and what is the output format is the most important part. Because you may think that you are doing the right commands and you copy the, as I said, you Google and you find something. Well, it's for the, uh, for the frame rate and the encoding and everything that the original person or the, the person that uh, put the tip on the internet did, and it may not work for you. So you may have to do some, some tweaking there. And by the way, if you want to answer, uh, ask questions, you can interrupt me. Uh, sometimes I speak too fast, and uh, some people have mentioned that I think that I have an accent. I haven't noticed it, but if you do. And Probably, and I, I thought about using make, and I thought about using a, a Perl for certain things, especially uh, for things where I'm uh, doing parsing, getting the information from somewhere else, or, or even Python, because I love Python. Uh, yes, I decided to use Bash just because it was the simplest way of getting at it. But yeah, you're right, because you have some dependencies, and you have some, uh, have I done this, and if I rerun, have do I already have the intermediate steps? And I found that uh, when I was practicing, one of the things that here on um, have on the presentation is one of the, the things that the script allowed me is to evolve my, my script. So when you are doing things manually, well, if you want to do something again, you have to do it from, from the start. Here, if I'm trying things, I have half of the things done, and then I go to bed. Next time, I run it again, and I start modifying or changing portions of the script that do different things. So for that, I'm pretty sure that make would be um, a very good solution. Then, as I said, I decided to start working at the frame level. With this command, and if you heard the present, uh, read the presentation introduction, this is about recipes. So these are a few of the recipes that I already have that you can take and modify and evolve. And as I said, hopefully you will come with even more ideas on what you can do. It, let, let, let me give you a couple of. Uh, 
here. For example, I, I wanted to rotate a logo, and I was thinking maybe for certain things I want to rotate a logo and then leave it here smaller uh, and make it um, a watermark for the rest of the video. Uh, there's, I started playing with, uh, with green screen, so I got a, a video of a, of a dragon. Flying on green screen. This is a video that uh, they offer free for, for you to play with green screen. And then I also played a little bit with um, green screen myself. So after after I run a script, I put it in just in front of a of a picture. So as you can see, you can do a lot of different things. And I did all that green screen. I'm pretty sure that there are other ways of doing it in the command line. And as there are a thousand ways of doing it, I, I just used one. I, 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 will, I will get there, but that's to give you an idea of the kind of things that, that you can do. So the first thing I extract, or the second thing after splitting the video, I extract it to frames. With FFmpeg, one of the nice things that you can do is I could have combined the splitting of the video and the conversion to frames. I decided to do it in two steps because for me it was easier to debug and easier to explain here. If I have an FFmpeg command this big, it's not gonna be as, as easy to understand. So you can co uh, combine the command. So again, the input file, then I want the format to be image two that is gonna uh, put it in a PNG format and uh, it will be exactly the same quality. I'm not gonna resize. I'm not gonna do anything with that. Uh, how are you doing? With that image. And, um, and as you see, I, I left some co uh, comments of things that I'm modifying. And I extract the audio to somewhere else. Uh, one of the, why do I extract the audio? Is I'm not gonna have time today, but uh, you can also, at the same time that you edit your video, you can enhance your audio. I was also playing with socks, for example, to get a noise sample on my script, get the noise sample, then remove the noise, and increase the volume. All, all that on the, on the same script. I'm not gonna have time to, to show that. Here, No, I, I've, I've had very good results uh, if I don't remove frames. There are certain things where I have to, rem if I had to remove frames, I think that I would do something uh, <coughs> different. What, I, uh, what I've noticed is that the way that I'm encoding, again, this is good enough for me, the way that I'm encoding, I'm uh, losing the, uh, how do you call it? The, What, what did you say? No, no I, 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 I lost the uh, time, the time coding for the, for the audio and the video. So certain things, if I want to split, uh, if I want to uh, post-process after, I may lose some of that. So I didn't uh, time encode the, the video, but I'm pretty sure that if you need it, you, you may be able to, to do it. And here is when I start using image magic. Um, the nice thing about FFmpeg and Image Magic, and why did I use them both, was because they are very well documented. If, if you want to learn FFmpeg, of course you can come to the, to the help page and it gives you a lot of information uh, about how to do certain things. Sometimes those things mean nothing to me. I'm not an audio video expert. What it helps me is to understand what do I have to search for on the internet. <laughs> so I didn't know that green screen was called chroma key. And somewhere I find the word chroma key and say, okay, how do I do chroma key? And then I find uh, Image Magic or FMPEG uh, or other examples of how to do green screen because I know how to search. So sometimes, again, I don't understand 
uh, what this page says, but I understand there's a command to do that. Now I can go look for examples on the, on the internet. And the same with image magic. The nice thing about image magic is that it has this usage page where pretty much everything that you want to do, there's an example. Image magic is so rich that I really doubt that there's one person in this world that knows everything it does. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that some developers it, uh, scratch their own itch and add this and add that, but it's so powerful and sometimes so complex that I really doubt that someone knows how to use 100% of what it does. As you know, open source evolves with many people uh, adding When I convert my video to frames, now I can work on the individual frame. You saw the video rotating or, or that image rotating. What I do there is there's a command there to sky resize rotate that helps me rotate frame by frame. And I will, I will get there. Um, if you saw the, the original dragon on the the, the original dragon was bigger than I needed for the for the video. This was the my original attempt, but it was too big of a dragon. So on my script, I scale, and at the same time I remove the the chroma key, or I, I remove the the green screen. One of the things that you can do with Image Magic is write text on the images. Here, <coughs> I, I have my basic, uh, let me see where I have it. I have my basic template for, for a background. <coughs> and this is what I start with. And based on my parameters, I draw the text using image magic. How do I draw? Again, it's Super simple. Um, I set uh, the font, the point size, and then I draw first my grays, that is are going to be the uh, the shade, and then I draw my white, that is going to be the that is going to be uh, if, uh, not this. I draw this. I this, 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 with a little bit of shade, and I do that with this command. When I was doing this, I started thinking, how could I do the Star Wars thing, where the text starts coming up and, uh, on the screen, or how do I do subtitles? As you can see, you can do a lot of things just getting creative with very simple commands. If you say, uh, put some time coding on a parameter file, and then you put text that in different places, you can do the boom, bam, if you are doing a Batman thing. <coughs> and as you can see, on, on the same command, I am writing multiple things. Uh, and once that I created my basic image, the uh, introduction image, I convert that to a small still video of the introduction. So I end up with an intermediate step like this. It's a video that is just one image converted to, to video. Not very exciting there. And very interesting, I found that I had to add an empty or a silent audio channel. If I didn't, when I combined with another video, the audio was moving to the to the beginning of the <coughs> of the video. So here actually I had to put an empty audio channel on the same for the same duration as the video. So the next audio channel would um, concatenate properly. Uh, and I do that just by using my input file as the zero device. So it's completely empty. 
for the, for the exit of my video, I do exactly the same thing. In this case, I always want the same text. Uh, and I create my video. For the fading, that's where things start getting fun. Uh, I decided to fade on three seconds. And I know that it's fairly uh, 30 frames per second, and I will say fairly because you will see later why that's important. <coughs> fairly 30 frames per second uh, on three seconds, that means 90 steps. On, or in 90 slides, I start composing and dissolving one image in top of the other. If you see my composite argument, depends on this very simple um, calculation. It is a uh, rule of three. If 100% of my slides are 90 slides or 90 images uh, or 90 frames, then what percentage is the first one or the second one or the third one? If you're familiar with the BC command, it's just a calculator. You, it receives input from the standard input or from a um, file, and it does uh, calculations. That's the way to not normally to do it in Bash. So um, I just echo this here. I want uh, a three, three decimals accuracy, and then I do it in a loop. That means that the introduction, PNG, is going to be fading in to my video for three seconds uh, for with the frames on my video. If you, if you saw originally, I extracted all my frames. When I extracted frames, I should have sh shown this. I created a... Mm, a directory called frames. And if I go to my frames directory, uh, let me go to another sample where I, you will see that each, each one is a frame. So it, it, and in this case, it's already post-processed. That's why it looks <coughs> already blended. So as you can see, it starts from this frame. It starts doing the composite image by image. And I do that with that very simple loop. Now you can see how if you use loops, you can have scrolling text or moving images or moving logos or whatever you want to do. Uh, for example, on the dragon, the next thing I, I would like to do is just for fun is maybe have a, a function that, that uh, derives where the dragon is moving. So it's gonna be moving based on a function instead of just static flying there. So that's uh, how we fade out the introduction. <coughs> and now, if you remember, we already have my introduction. That's uh, three seconds of video, solid video. I have my faded introduction, and I have my, uh, my exit uh, or my end of the video. Now I can reassemble it. Here, again, I could have done this in in one step, I decided to do it in three, again, for debugging purposes and to explain it better. <coughs> I uh, reass first, I, well, one of the things that you saw is that, and this is very important, when you are editing video, regardless of the quality, it's better to do everything that you need to do with the original quality and only encode or transcode to your end format when you're done so you don't lose quality. Because every time that you encode or every time that you transcode, you're gonna lose quality. <coughs> yes. It, 
Oh, no, uh, that one is uh, at the end. But if you go here, uh, kwlog.org slash node slash 854. <coughs> one of the things that I will warn you on that, um, on this blog post, is one of the things that uh, that reminded me about something. You know, open source advances very fast. It has the positive and the not so great. The positive is that you always have new things. The not so great for is when you have a script like this and you don't want to modify it and just want to, as I said, set it and forget it. Well. The next version may deprecate things, may change things. And I know that from the time that I wrote this blog post in 2011 to now, things have changed. So some of the commands may need a little bit of tweaking. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so here I reassemble the, the frames. Uh, with the from remember that first I extracted two frames. Now I'm my input are all the frames, and this percentage D indicates that it's going to um, it's going to go from one, two, three, four, five without me having to do anything. Uh, as you can see, I don't have a for loop here. FMPEG does it for me. I also set my input file as the MP3, and maybe here is where I could do the time encoding for the, um, for the audio, and I didn't do it, and I put it in an MPG. But as I want to upload this to YouTube, my second step, after I reassemble everything, don't ask me what this means. I went into the internet and said, what is the best FFmpeg command to encode for YouTube, <laughs> and someone smarter and more knowledgeable than me, yes, uh, came up uh, with this. So I just uh, adapted it because I couldn't copy it uh, directly. And uh, probably one of these days, I will go in and figure out what all those commands mean. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And and all those things the great thing about hearing presentation, you get all that all that feedback. Uh, someone at the uh, at the Ohio Lin uh, Linux Fest uh, approached me and, and said, "Why are you using this instead of that?" I said, "Well, because that's the command that I found." And, uh, uh, but then I, I can't remember what what it was uh, when I was encoding or. Okay, so yes, uh, thank you. Th th there are other ways uh, to do it. Uh, to do good. So if later I will take that, take that note. So I put the overlay because I don't do overlays on all my videos. You saw that I on on my command on my parameter file, it looks just like parameters. Say overlay image. Well, that well, the, my overlay image is actually a function that receives the file that I want to overlay, the gravity, and the start frame. If you see, I didn't give it in uh, on frame a number; I gave it on seconds. So I have to convert frames to seconds. Our video, e even though we think of it as being 30 frames per second, 
it's actually 29.97. And that's a number that I should put as a constant somewhere else in my script because normally you would reuse that uh, magic number of frames when you're doing things. So I convert just my, uh, my seconds into frames, and that's my start frame, the same I do for my end frame. And then I do a simple loop, um, composing them, overlaying them. Uh, I could also scale uh, on this same, same command. And do you know why that is? Why, why 1001? Okay. Well, you saw the cleanup is just deleting what I did. And that is the, the whole script. As you saw, very few commands, very simple. And while you ask questions, I can go because we have the five minutes for questions. I will go, uh, meanwhile I'll show you, for example, the, the dragon, my, my script for the dragon. Again, you, you know that I extract the frames. Then, the here, if you see my, my function name, it's shrink and add transparency. That's where development practices would say, don't put and in a function name, but <laughs> that's two functions. Uh, here, I am resizing the original image to a 25%, and I'm also converting everything that has this color, and everything that has this color, I'm making it transparent, for, and I'm gonna uh, save it in another folder called my alpha frames with the with the original file name. And then here I decided to do it with a still image of my of the CN Tower, but as you see, you could actually uh, get two directories or two different um, wildcards to to merge two videos together and have the dragon flying over, over, a moving, over a moving video. And then I just reassemble the, the video with my original audio and my merged frames. <coughs> to rotate, Again, I go to my convert uh, command from image magic where I rotate based on an angle and I define the angle again uh, over 180 frames. I want my, my logo to rotate uh, on, a, on a for loop and that's it. If I want it to dissolve at the same time that it's once that I rotated the, uh, the images, I dissolve them into my video. I hope that with this, you're starting to get ideas of what you can do in your own videos, uh, how you can use this to do pretty much whatever you, uh, you want. Uh, if you go to the FMPEG or the Image Magic page, you can do resample, you can uh, turn your video into a sepia, video, you can turn it black and white, or even, you know, those cool things where you only leave the reds uh, on a video. So someone with red shoes and a red hat is walking and everything is black and white. You can do it very easily. Well, not very easily, but uh, you, you can do it with image magic, creating a, a mask for the color. And you do that for every image. And then you convert to black and white everything that is not in a mask. That is explained 
is somewhere here. Well, uh, that's explained here where I'm almost running out of time. So that was kind of fast, a whirlwind, uh, but we only had 50 minutes. Thank you very much for being here. I hope that you find it interesting. Thank you, Raul. Uh, Thank you. Just a small token of appreciation Thank you. in the Thanksgiving. And if you ha want more information, you can ask him. He knows a lot. I, I used to use for my very simple things Kino, but it, they're no longer developing it. And I think he got tired of trying to fix some that makes it crash. Yeah, once that you have a video editor or any application that has code specifically to recover from crashes, <laughs> you know that they are having a, uh, some problem that it's easier to put a patch to recover from crash, crashes than stop it from crashing. So. Uh, but that that I that I liked uh, because it's super simple. It, so anybody else use any other video graphical video editor? No. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm planning to do something with probably with this Blender or uh, Synfig. Have, have you used Synfig to do animation? Oh, it's amazing. You just define certain points and where you want to translate the points, and then you have things working. But very nice. Uh, this point so we can publish the video that you uh, Okay, perfect. Okay, so email and you can... And I heard that this was for rating the... Uh, yeah.